these are the boards I'm going to use for the top and I'm trying to lay them out so that they make a cohesive flat looking surface with all this different grain going. What I want to do is have this straight grain on each one of the boards when I put them together that that will disappear. I've got nice grain going here. So now that I have them laid out where I want them, I need to mark them so that I will come back to this layout. So what I do is I take a piece of chalk, make a carpenter's triangle. No matter how these boards get separated out, I can always put them back at the same arrangement. Now I need to hand plane all of these edges so that the joint disappears. I'll glue these two together. I'll glue these two together. And then I'll glue these two sections together here. the center of these boards. I started here, made a short stroke, made a second stroke a little longer, and then a third stroke a little longer. I did that on both of these boards. And the reason I did that was to create a gap right here in the center from about here to here. They don't completely close. Now on the ends, they completely go together. This is called a spring joint. And the advantage of this is that when you get to put the glue on here and you bring these boards together these ends are already touching and then when you apply clamp pressure to the center it pulls the center together closes that up like that and it also increases the pressure of these boards on the end that are already together I'll show you how that works it opens closes open it up and close it up. I could pretty much get away with two clamps in the center of this board and it would create equal pressure throughout the whole length of the board. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clamp on each end and clamp these two pieces together. That's what it, that, what that does is it makes these two ends flat right here. When I close this clamp right here, these two center clamps, You'll see the glues start to squeeze out even though out here there's no clamps. Coming out there going all the way down there. Clamping here. Comes out there and goes all the way down there. I'll take a third clamp and put it right here in the middle that's to keep these two clamps from trying to do this to the board. This kind of equals out the pressure going this way and this way. That's why you should always clamp with clamps on the top and clamps on the bottom. So there we go. Three clamps. This thing is completely clamped with equal amount of pressure the full length of the boards. Okay, now that we've got the board out of clamps, it's glued together to remove this glue line. There's a couple ways to do this. One way is to use a belt sander. You have to make sure that you keep the platen flat on the wood and don't tip it sideways. That's where it will dig in. This can do the most damage actually. So let me show you how this works. So you can see that that will take it down fairly quickly. Of course you'll have to go back over this and sand with this to many grits to get it down smooth. Okay, now the next option is, is to use an ROS, a rabbit, random orbital sander, always attached to dust collection. On this I have about a hundred grit sandpaper, and let's see how this one works. Now as you can tell, this one didn't take it down as fast, but there's less risk of digging and gouging in like you do it would with a belt sander and then you have to continue to sand to get rid of those marks. This is what I prefer to use. 
is a scraper. As you can see, a scraper will take nice smooth cuts and it will get down pretty quickly too. And it leaves a beautifully smooth finish. And it makes a lot less noise. That is almost ready to do a final sanding and put a finish on it. So there's my preferred way. Everybody has their own choices. Um, the joy of woodworking is sometimes the quiet and solitude of using hand tools. The joy of woodworking is also moving on to your next project as quickly as possible and ending up with the same results. So if you want to get to this point fast, you can use the sander, the belt sander. You take a little bit more of a risk of damaging the wood or gouging the wood. Or you can take the slow and quiet way that I prefer a lot of times, not always, is to use a hand scraper. I need to fine tune these two edges to make it work well. Now I have to hand plane that edge. You can see I don't I can't put it in my vise because it's way too high and I don't have any support like that. So what I've done, what this is just a piece of wood with a bunch of dowel holes in it and a pin that can go from all the whole different holes. And on the end I made a square plug or a square hook right there that will fit down in any of these holes along my vise. Now I've got a perfect height that I can good and support it. It's a little wobbly this way, but I don't care about that. I need to support, so I'm pushing down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this one over onto this one. Flip that one over. I'll flip, it, flip them up on edge. This edge I'm going to be planing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down here, put some clamps. I'll put one on this end. And clamp that surface together right there where it's going to be planing. Get just a bunch of a whole bunch more clamps just to hold these two pieces together firmly so that they don't slip like this is heavy. This white oak is really heavy. Now then these are the two edges that are going together. They've been folded like a book, like this. Now then, I'm going to run my hand plane across here. So it doesn't really matter if I plane like this, if, I, if it's off a little bit this way or that way. When these fold back together, they're going to be identical because they're both angled at the same. So they will match up perfectly and the two boards will lay flat when they're glued together. All right, I've got these edges planed and they're ready to go. Take them out of the clamps, everything go back together. I want to show you something though. I've checked these with straight edge and they're perfectly straight and they're also perfectly flat across that direction. They're not square this way. This surface is not square to this surface, but that doesn't matter because when I put them together, they're going to line up perfectly. My bench is not large enough to support my clamps. So what I'm using are clamp stands. They have grooves in them that the clamp bars fit in, and they work really well. I'm using biscuits for alignment only. I couldn't use a spring joint because the boards were too wide. So here it is, the dining table top all glued up. So there you have it. The boards have been glued together, so now we've got a tabletop. In my next video, I'm going to add some breadboard ends to it with a really nice little detail that I think y'all like. Join me then.